Welcome back, mathematicians. We have a CGI problem to, to do today, so we're going to go ahead and jump on in and read it. So, um, it says, Mrs. Euler has a fenced garden. The garden has room for blank rows. In each row, there are blank columns. Mrs. Euler needs to know how many flowers that will fit in her garden so she knows how many to buy. So, we're going to go through this step. I mean, this uh, problem step by step together and figure out what we need to do. So first of all, we've read the equation, or not the equation, I'm so sorry. We've read the, the problem. So now we need to visualize it. I don't have a video for you today, but I do have this picture for you to be able to visualize what's happening. So you just put Miss Euler in that garden and you can see her trying to figure out how many flowers do I need that can fill this garden. Um, so go ahead and repeat um, the problem with me. Mrs. Euler has a fenced garden. The garden has room for blank rows. In each row, there are blank columns. Mrs. Euler needs to know how many flowers will fit in her garden so she knows how many to buy. All right, so what do we know? Well, we know that she is going to plant a garden. We know that there are columns and there are rows. Hmm, columns and rows, columns and rows. So we know there are columns and rows, so that tells me that they just might be equal. Um, we also know that she wants to fill the whole garden, the whole Finston garden with the plants. So she wants to buy as many as she can fit there. All right, so what do we need to know? Well, we need to know how many plants for her to buy. She can't buy 20 plants if she only has spot five, right? Um, if she has spot for 20 plants, she needs to buy more than five plants. So we need to know how many she needs to buy when she goes to the store. So the action is her planting and knowing how many to plant. Is there a hidden question in this one? We've talked about hidden questions. Is there a hidden question in this one? No, there is not a hidden question because this is not a two-step problem. So there's no hidden question in this CGI today. So now we're going to solve with strategy. So our equation, or not equation, I'm sorry, our a number set that we're going to put in, that we're going to do together, is 4 and 3. 4 and 3. So Mrs. Euler has a fenced-in garden that has room for, that 4 is 4 rows and 3 columns. I'm hoping you mathematicians are already thinking, ooh, I know what we're going to do. We're going to make a, you fill in the blank, an array. Good. So let's think about this. An array is just one way that we could solve. But let's go ahead and jump into an array because that is what we've been talking about. So if we have four rows, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say um, row one, row two, row three, row four. So I have my four rows. But there are three columns in each row, so I'm going to make a column here. Let's see. One column. Two columns. Three columns. Sorry, that's not very equal. Remember, they need to be equal. At least equal numbers, trying to make them equal sizes. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this because this is just a math thinking page. It's okay if we make a mistake. That looks a little bit more equal, doesn't it? More even. So do you see four rows? One, two, three, four rows. Do you see three columns? One, two, three columns. So I can solve this by an array. We can count them individually or make it more efficient. And let's use our repeated addition. How many um, are in each column? We have four plus four plus four. So you could do repeated addition of your fours, or you could do how many is in this row? You have three, 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 and three. So you could do repeated addition of four threes. I wonder if you notice a pattern between these two repeated addition equations because you can do both of them, but they look different. 
Hmm. So you can add these together. Hey, look, we can figure out our doubles. Oh, look, we have two sets of doubles here. So that tells me four plus four is eight. You add another four, what do we have? We have 12 spots. Well, let's check to make sure that that's correct. Three and three is six. Well, six and six, because this would be double six then, is equal to 12. So Mrs. Euler has 12 spots that so she can plant some pretty flowers in, doesn't she? Um, so this is an array that you can use to help you solve. These are repeated addition sentences. That the array helps you find is also a strategy. You have two repeated addition sentences, the fours and the threes. All right. But if you want to solve in a different way and you got really comfortable with those number lines that we worked on last week, you can do a number line here. So if I put out my um, open number line, and I'm just going to write open number line so you know which one this one is. So I can jump by, let's see, we have groups of four and we have groups of three. So I think I'm pretty comfortable jumping or counting by three. So I'm going to do groups of three. How many groups of three will I have? One group of three, two groups of three, three groups of three, four groups of three. I'm going to do this four times. So I'm going to jump plus three. Obviously, he's going to give me to three. I'm then going to add three to that, which will get me to six. I'm going to add another group of three. Remember, where the group of is the um, plants right here, okay? The group of plants. That group of three is going to get me to nine. And then my fourth group of three is going to get me to 12. I still have 12 as my answer. So 12, 12, 12. Look at this. I can use so many different strategies to solve this. I have one more to show you that could be used. Um, this isn't one that is used very often, but I've seen a couple times when we ta start talking about arrays. This is called an input output table. And this may be something that you've seen in Dreambox. Um, so what we would do is we would say the rows go on this side and the plants go on this side. So in the first row, how many plants are there? There's three, so I'm going to put a three here. In the second row, how many plants are there? There's also three. There are four rows, so we need to know that there's three plants in each of those rows. And then you can solve from there and know that there's 12 plants. Well, they're really 12 plant spaces because we haven't bought the plants yet, right? You can do it like that, or you could do rows and plants. Row one has three plants row two, and then just add it from here. Instead of saying three, 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 and three, make your input output table more efficient and say two rows would then have six plants. Three rows would then have nine plants. And that fourth row would give us 12 plants. So you're doing the same type of idea, but you made it more efficient. And now we know there's 12 plants here as well. So right here, guys, there is what? One, two, three, four different strategies you can use to figure out how many plants Mrs. Euler needs to buy for her flower garden. So you can choose one of these that we just talked about. You can use a completely different strategy. That is up to you. What works best for you as a mathematician, okay? So we know using this number set, the answer that Mrs. Euler needs to get 12 plants from the store. Um, so Go ahead and the the, use the following number sets and solve for your number sets. Please use a pen, a dark pen, or a marker to um, solve and um, show us your picture because the pencil ones are really hard to see how you guys are solving, okay? Um, and if you only have a pencil, maybe you can type out your addition um, in this space below, okay? 
Um, but we want to be able to see your awesome math thinking, okay? And I would love to bring some thinking into our next e next um, problem solving video that we do. So good luck, mathematicians, and I look forward to seeing your strategies.